I'm joined here in the studio by Philip Manduka. He is Head of Investments at the ECU Group. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Um, just looking at uh, Mr Barroso's words there, uh, he said uh, that he was delighted that the, uh, the uh, ECB, of course, was independent, but was delighted that they'd come on board with this plan. I suppose critics are going to question just how independent the ECB is now. Well, it's not independent. It was never independent. It was po politically appointed and remains a political entity, and this weekend's shown that perfectly clearly. Uh, on Thursday, Trishi apparently had absolutely no inkling whatsoever as to what was going to be happening and denied all knowledge of anything that any discussions had taken place at the ECB. Um, this weekend he's been told what to do and he's promptly done it. Um, goodbye independence. Now this is a huge amount of money that's, that's been come up with and does seem to be quelling the markets at the moment. I suppose the question, the, the idea is that if you've got this much money you're never going to need to use it. If you did need to use it there would be huge problems wouldn't there? Well this is a Euro tarp. Um, don't get away from that. It's what it is. And it's very much uh, adopting the policy of, of uh, Hank Paulson, which is the bazooka in the pocket, mm -hmm. um, hopefully not even needing to use it. Uh, the bigger question, of course, and it's, and it's commendable of Europe to have done what it's done. It's shown that they are cohesive and it's shown that they have now stepped up to the plate, all of which is good and of all of which is causing a rally in financial markets and in the euro in particular. Mm -hmm. So tick those boxes. But thereafter, the bigger questions remain. Those riots in Athens were not based on the availability of credit. Those riots in Athens were based on austerity measures that needed to create fiscal contraction to avoid using that credit. Those problems remain in place. And the key question remains, has Europe got the political will, the electoral political will, to force socialist contraction uh, into fiscal contraction itself? And that doubt has to remain. So is there a danger that countries like Greece and Spain and Portugal, who had these very, very large austerity measures going into place, are now going to be sitting back slightly and saying, oh, things aren't quite as bad as we thought they were. We don't need to push the country so hard. Well, of course, it's, it's relaxed the need, the emergency need, to go and do something mm. fast uh, domestically, not least of which is if this money starts being called on by a Greece mm. or a Portugal, guess what? other countries are going to have to fiscally expand to put the money up. Um, it's not a satisfactory um, a a analysis and it does very much rely on this money not being needed. Back we go to square one. Are we going to get the fiscal discipline? That was the question last week and notwithstanding the good news this weekend of a provision of massive liquidity if necessary, the if necessary part creates doubt. Now the other major question last week was whether or not the euro could exist without a common fiscal policy there still is no common fiscal policy. No, there isn't, but you're getting much more of, of, of a cohesive co commonality amongst countries towards their currency and their system, which is good. The Germans are playing ball, and for Europe to exist, mm. the Germans have to play ball with Europe. They're doing that this weekend, and that's created the necessary confidence to take us to the next step. <laughs> What do you expect this plan to give us in the short term? We're seeing uh, the, the, both the bond market and the equity markets looking like they're rallying on this. Is this enough? Um, they're rallying because everyone was the wrong way and everyone's losing money uh, uh, this morning uh, based on that. Positioning has been the biggest driver of this shock and awe treatment from Europe. The question, of course, everyone's now asking is, will it continue? Um, and the answer probably is for the short term, yes, because everyone wants it to. People want markets to go up. Equity markets want to go up because most of the players in it are long only players. So for the time being, a bogey has been removed from the pack. Europe is no longer a situation in immediate crisis, uh, which was the case next. And we will now look for the next problem. Uh, the UK is that problem. <laughs> I was just going to come on to that. Uh, looking at what's happening now in the UK, are is it, is it even more, um, is, it, is David Cameron under even more pressure now to come up with not only a deal and to form a government, but also then to come up quickly with a credible plan? Because as the, as the guns are trained away from the euro, do they come on to sterling? Well, they are uh, focusing on sterling. Um, and, and the key question is, and, and these guys are normal guys, they're not some sort of super god. So you've got mm. to think, what would you be doing in their position? Mm. The key thing that the Lib Dems and the Conservatives must do in the UK right now is whatever it is that they do, they must ensure that they're in play for four to five years. They can't go and do an informal pact that creates a situation that is tenuous and can go to another election in eight months because two things will come out of that, Andrea. One of which is you can't take any hard medicine if you know you're going to go to another election. You'll get voted out. So no, none of the hard measure policies on fiscal uh, contraction will occur. Bad for the UK, bad for sterling bad for UK equities. Uh, and the other thing, of course, uh, that is very important is if they are going to do this pact together and can stay in play for four to five years mm. to see this medicine through, 
That's the best news. I believe that ultimately that's what they're going to do. They both want power so badly, uh, and the Lib Debs want, uh, if you want, political authority. They've never been near the centre stage. Yes. This gives them their chance. Well, we shall, uh, we shall wait with bated breath and see what happens. Philip, thank Thanks, you very Sarah. much indeed for joining us.